Hello and welcome to 72 Dragons. Today we had the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Anabel Rodriguez and Osman Galindo. Welcome to this interview, Dr. Anabel Rodriguez and Oscar Galindo. It's an honor and a pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Dr. Anabel Rodriguez is an assistant professor in the Department of Epidemiology, Human Genetics, and Environmental Sciences at the University of Texas Health Science Center at Houston School of Public Health. She is a public health professional with experience managing research projects focused on occupational health and safety among agricultural workers. She also continues to facilitate vaccine outreach in rural communities across West and South Texas. Osman Galindo works as a senior multimedia specialist at the Texas Epidemic Public Health Institute TEFI. He is an experienced filmmaker working in photography, videography, and design. And he's also has experience in project and team management, uh, working directly with major institutions in the greater Houston area. They collaborated in a film production empowering rural Texas communities for future pandemics, which was showcased at the American Public Health Association Film Festival 2023 in Atlanta, Georgia. My name is Dr. Pietro Aparicio from 72 Dragons Health. Thank you for joining us and for sharing your experiences with us today. Without any further ado, uh, let's begin. Uh, Dr. Annabel Rodriguez, uh, what sparked your interest in pursuing a, a doctorate in epidemiology? In addition, uh, can you share about some of your key initiatives among agricultural workers in Texas and some of the successes from these initiatives? Yeah, so I think in order to, to really answer that question, I have to take you back to my childhood. And that's one thing you know that appeared in, in our video uh, through Tefi is that my love for public health and my love for education really started through my parents, uh, who are both immigrants from Mexico. I was born to a migrant farm worker family. We migrated from a small town in South Texas called Rio Grande City. If you blink, you miss it. Uh, um, all the way to the valleys of, of Southern California and Bakersfield to pick anything in season from onions to grape. And we lived in um, the migrant camps that are made for migrant farm workers. And then we would come back um, after the season. So I grew up doing this every single summer um, and started to work when I was 13 and, and one of the things that my dad always told us was that he couldn't leave us anything in value, right? Any monetary uh, possessions, but he could leave us our education. And so I found that very empowering to move forward. Um, I did have the help of a lot of migrant education programs growing up, um, which then led me to my undergraduate at St. Edwards University through the College Assistant Migrant Program. Uh, which is a program that is one of the oldest programs in the U.S. that is designed for migrant farm worker children to be able to receive their education. Um, also, as a Gates Millennium Scholarship, I was able to pay through my school. And I really thought initially that I wanted to become an OBGYN and go back to my community and, and help women with reproductive health issues. Um, but I started my master's and I started to work among dairy farm workers in eastern New Mexico and in the Texas Panhandle. And I just fell in love. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is full circle. I need to come back to this work. And my mentor then, Dr. Dave Dufresne, uh, really inspired me to, to pursue my uh, my doctorate degree in, in occupational epidemiology. And so then I started to, to really move into my own aspects of, of work and working with migrant farm worker families back in the valley, just like my families. Um, and I still work a lot with dairy farm workers and, and H2A visa workers and bodega workers um, down in the valley. 
And so that has led to a lot of initiatives now in, in this role from, you know, the really the start of COVID, which was my, my start of my appointment from um, doing basic education to giving out personal protective equipment or PPE to workers so that they had um, protection because they were deemed essential through the pandemic, but they weren't given the same protections, right? They they were systemically include, excluded from um, from the rest of the people who were deemed essential in the workplace, including their chances to get vaccines, um, which opened up here in Texas first, March 29th of 2021, but that was for all 22 million adults in Texas as well. And so that really diminished the chances of of agricultural, be, agricultural workers being able to access vaccines. So we started to bring vaccines out to the farms to them so that they had equitable access as well as their families. Um, then after that, we started to uh, play around with the idea of a mobile clinic to bring out to, to farms and the feasibility of that. And that's something that we're still working with. Then we moved on to door-to-door campaign, uh, working with with community coordinators in the Panhandle, in the Rio Grande Valley, in El Paso, to go out to the homes of ag workers and educate them there about vaccine um, access and as, as well as the resources in their community so that they're able to be empowered with that knowledge and be able to use the resources in their community. Um, and then we moved on to workplace education through an OSHA grant where we went out to the farms and gave education about not only how to prevent um, COVID, but also the flu, which is you know really big right now in, in our respiratory seasons, um, tetanus vaccine, and how important that is, especially working with heavy machinery, Hep A, Hep B, which is uh, quite prevalent in the Rio Grande Valley, um, as well as monkeypox, because that's that's what was um, that's what was pretty high. Um, it, when we were launching this program. Um, and then we moved on to the USDA Farm Worker Relief Program, which is now giving out um, $600 payments to agricultural workers for any wages lost during COVID. Um, as you can probably remember, you know, everyone in the U.S. who filed taxes was able to get a stimulus check of $1,200. Well, this was not quite the case for people who um, are not part of, right, systemically excluded and are not part of our system. Um, and so a lot of ag workers did not receive um, their $1,200 payment. And so this is a way of really thanking them for their job as a reimbursement uh, for working and, and having been in the industry. And so uh, we've been able to give over $2.5 million in payments and just in the Rio Grande Valley, um, being able to to really work on the relationships and the collaborations we have with the community, the ag workers, their families, community coordinators, but also the employers is a really, really important piece here. We've been able to leverage um, over $3.5 million in grant money in just three years to help and empower families. And so for me, really full circle. Um, I know that was a lot to take in, but it, it really... I'm really intentional about being a champion for ag workers um, and their families because they are the base of our economy. They are the most important piece to really keeping our nation together. Um, and I think they do a job that no one else would do. And, and we've got to be really thankful for that. Great. Thank you for sharing your journey. Uh, very impressive. And it's great to hear about these uh, wonderful projects. Um, Osman Angelindo, um, as a senior multimedia specialist at the Texas Epidemic Public Health Institute, TAFI, can you share insights on your role? Um, what inspired you to work in the field of public health? Uh, yeah, so uh, for the uh, Texas Epidemic Public Health Institute, TAFI, um, I'm primarily uh, serving as a digital media specialist, um, which entails uh, filmmaking, photography, uh, design and uh, kind of like under the umbrella of just overall storytelling. Um, one of my goals is to highlight some of the amazing work that we're doing. Um, Pefi's uh, purpose, I guess, is to prepare Texas for future outbreaks. And uh, we have a variety of different programs that um, are really amazing and uh, worth highlighting. Um, so originally, I have a background in uh, 
uh, fine art, performing arts, storytelling, uh, public health as a topic of uh, storytelling is something that's really new to me. Um, but I think uh, it was it was after the COVID-19 pandemic that I became especially interested in the role that communications could play um, in a public health setting. So um, shortly thereafter, I found out about Tefi and uh, it seemed like a, a perfect fit for the kind of work that I wanted to focus on. And uh, one of the most, I think, uh, in, like amazing and uh, rewarding parts about uh, the work that we've been doing um, is getting to collaborate with amazing scientists and researchers uh, like Annabelle. So yeah, it's been a really uh, powerful journey for me, I think, recently, um, seeing the kind of uh, impact and, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, just, just the uh, impact and, and the uh, the, the, the rewarding uh, nature of like uh, focusing on this kind of uh, work. Thank you for uh, sharing. Um, now, this question is for both. Um, regarding the film production, empowering rural Texas communities for future pandemics. Uh, as I mentioned, it was showcased at the American Public Health Association Film Festival 2023 in Atlanta, Georgia. Can you talk about some of the highlights of this film production and what are you aiming to achieve through this film? Yeah, and I can probably lead with that and, and Oz can um, finish a little bit about the film production piece. I think our main goal initially when we started to talk about filming this was to highlight the populations who live and work in the shadows, um, agricultural workers, work in, you know, inherent dangerous jobs, precarious employment, right? And at times um, are also absent from their families in order to feed the nation. And um, as mentioned previously, they're systemically excluded from public health and from healthcare initiatives. And and this is why the work that we do through TEFI is really intentional about giving ag workers a platform, but also making them active participants in the work that we do. So we really wanted to highlight their lives, their struggles, the everyday, you know, details of their lives to really show the public health community that agricultural workers are still among us um, and that there is a lot of work to do. There's still a lot to pick up. Um, and so through the work that we do at TEFI, uh, through the working group that I'm in, which is the small rural healthcare systems, we've been able to do things like resource lists, um, as mentioned in, in the film, um, that have basic needs, right? And and, and these are for communities that uh, were disproportionately affected by COVID. And a lot of workers didn't know where to turn, right? They didn't know where to go for a COVID test. They didn't know where to go um, if they felt sick or needed medication or if they needed help with utilities or childcare um, during COVID or even funeral assistance, right? No one prepares you in life to, to host a funeral. Um, and so all of these things that we put into a resource list that we were able to collaborate with um, the University of Texas in Paso were really important for these rural communities. And so we really wanted to highlight all the work and all the pieces that we were able to do through uh, through TEFI. And so, of course, we have an awesome communication team um, and they were able to produce this in <laughs> an incredible, like fast amount of time. Um, and did a, obviously a, a great quality work. And so I'll um, have us talk to you a little bit more about the film production piece of it. Yeah, in, in terms of the production, I think we always knew that we wanted to highlight Annabelle's work in some way. Um, we uh, initially started off uh, interviewing her in Houston. Uh, it, was, it was a pretty traditional view. I think along the course of the interview, we learned about Annabelle's like amazing uh, story and and uh, sort of like uh, personal journey and into her work and, and I, I thought that that was a really a powerful way to start the film and uh, pair that with some of her uh, found photography uh, from her childhood. I thought that was a really um, uh, powerful way to uh, introduce the audience not just to Annabelle but to also uh, the work that uh, she's doing. So. Um, from there, we, we went went off and filmed, I think, on location in, uh, I don't know, is it uh, Edinburgh, I think? Um, and uh, and then also in Houston, but and like Annabelle was saying, it uh, 
it was a pretty quick production. We had maybe uh, a couple weeks of notice to uh, be able to submit on time to the film festival that we wanted to be a part of. Um, so uh, it was an aggressive production, I guess you could say. But uh, overall, like I think we're really happy with the way that um, Annabelle's story is kind of highlighted, but also how the work itself is also highlighted. Thank you. I'm surprised you said it. it you guys did it in a short period of time. It's, um... It's a very well done production, a very engaging. So I really enjoy it, uh, watching it. Now, uh, talking about um, media and film, uh, can you walk us through some of the digital media film content uh, created uh, for the Texas Epidemic Public Health Institute, uh, TEFI? Um, I saw uh, other uh, productions that the uh, organization has. has how does the team go about selecting the topic or area of work and how do you measure the success of these initiatives? Um, yeah, so like uh, we have kind of a, a, a really awesome uh, communications team. Um, it's, a, it's a collaborative effort. So we, we take a look at overall what's happening inside of TEFI and uh, we, we make decisions, I guess, as a team to decide on what what sort of stories we want to tell or what we want to want to highlight uh, in broader detail, in greater detail. Um, in a like, uh, I guess, uh, besides Annabelle's uh, video and her work, uh, we're also now working on a film about our wastewater um, consortium project. Um, it's it's meant to highlight the work that that team is doing, um, and sort of tell the story and tell the uh, tell the narrative in, in, in broader detail. Um, yeah, I think, Annabelle, do you want to jump in on on uh, measuring success? Yeah, and I think as Oz mentioned, we're also working on um, kind of a new, a new piece of, I would say even a continuation of this first video that we did with the resource list, but also um, another tool that we just developed, which is a um, almost like a, a mock-up of Loteria or Bingo. So Loteria is a game that's played across you know, Latin America, especially in Mexico. Um, it's meant to be a fun family pastime, right? People come together, um, but we've changed the uh, decals into, um, into things like uh, vaccine, into virus, bacteria, so that people can learn both English and Spanish, but can learn about these concepts in in a way that is culturally appropriate, but also linguistically appropriate and literacy appropriate. Um, so we piloted this Loteria game. It was so much fun. We were out um, in the Panhandle and it was a group of, of dairy farm workers, not only from Mexico, but from Guatemala as well, uh, that were able to come together into one room play this game, learn more about vaccine preventable infectious diseases, right, in order to really prevent um, us from from having that miss and this communication in the future and really learning hands on in a way that people understand. Um, and so Oz and his team were there. We are planning another trip this month, actually in a couple of weeks to El Paso, and we will replicate almost the same, but with day workers that come in from Juarez, Chihuahua into El Paso, Texas. There is um, a center that is for these day laborers. Uh, that's ran by uh, Mr. Carlos Marentes. And so he's gonna be able to host us and we're we're gonna go out there and do a couple of interviews, talk to people about their experience, not only with a resource list, which have already been distributed in that community, over 30,000 of them um, in the past year by a group of amazing community uh, coordinators. And so we'll talk about if they use these resource lists. So that's a really good way of measuring success, right? Have you been able to use the resources in your area, but also kind of do a, a satisfaction uh, check-in with them of, of how are these tools and what else can we do? Um, and then that's, again, a way of making ag workers and their families active participants in the work that we do. Instead of pushing material on them, we ask, what is it that is needed so that we can create it for you and let's create it together so that it, it works really well. So we're really looking forward to, to that film production. Um, and really being able to measure that success. Wonderful. It's great to see how film 
and video productions can impact health, uh, particularly public health. Um, now, um, these uh, projects are usually done in collaboration with other individuals or organizations. So uh, your initiatives involve collaboration with different organizations, I imagine. Uh, could you elaborate on the significance of interdisciplinary approaches for tackling health issues, uh, particularly public health, and how these uh, partnerships have improved the impact of your work? Yeah, most definitely. I think this it takes a village really to do this work from my graduate research assistants to my program manager, Ana Pineda, uh, but mostly is working with community organizations that know their community well. They were there when COVID happened. They were the first responders when COVID happened for their communities, um, especially for rural health partnerships. We've been able to work with the National Center for Farm Worker Health. Um, they're based out of Austin and they do amazing work nationwide for um, agricultural workers and their families and having health access um, through uh, different grant monies. Also, uh, Lupe, which is La Unión del Pueblo Pero, this is the Cesar Chavez um, Dolores Huerta group that was established to really help workers with basic needs, right? English classes, um, legal services, uh, you know, information about um, social services. We also work with Tarla, which is the Texas Rio Grande Legal Aid. Uh, they have a migrant program that has pro bono services just for agricultural workers who's, who have had a wage theft or wage loss um, and any other issues, workplace violence. And so we really try to work with these groups to access our community and be able to, to work with them. In the Panhandle, we work with Family Support Services in Amarillo. We were able to establish a group through them called Sembrando el Sueño, which is just for the dairy farm workers and the agricultural workers in the panhandle to be able to access services, to have transportation to uh, the medical centers in this, these very, very remote areas of the panhandle. You drive for hours and there's not a lot happening. Um, and so we really wanted to make sure that our workers there had that support. Um, in the business partnership side, we've worked with different business sectors to draw lessons that were learned um, to better prepare industries that are key for the Texas economy. So for instance, we were able to invite to our Tefi Talks series that we have, which y'all should check out, um, the Texas International Public, uh, excuse me, the Texas International Produce Association. Um, and they are out of Mission, Texas, which is in the Rio Grande Valley. Um, and they really overlook the membership of producers in Texas. And so we were able to invite them as well as a citrus grower to tell us about how they dealt with COVID, how the business side of it ran. But without the business, you can't have ag health worker um, health and safety without the business perspective. So they were able to tell us what health and safety measures they put in place in order for their business to run. So it was a very beautiful um, combination of all of these measures that, you know, as an occupational epidemiologist, you want to you want to like learn about it, know about, because this is how uh, things function in, in a business, especially when you have a workforce. Um, we also have partnerships with public health workers across the state to ensure that all Texas communities are prepared. This includes our um, our Department of, of Health, Texas DSHS, um, not only the the headquartered out of out of Austin, but all our regions across Texas. Um, the local health departments, right? There are some counties that have local health departments on their own, as well as community health workers. Um, they have been really these promotoras or community coordinators, right? They go by many different names, but they have been key to the initiatives that we have. They are the boots on the ground. They are the individuals who, who know their communities very well um, and are really proxies and representatives for them. Um, and then lastly, as Os mentioned, um, we also have a cross sector for early detection in wastewater. So uh, we work with public utilities, local governments, again, the public health departments, science labs to really look at, you know, in real time, the number of infections that there are in our wastewater system to make more informed decisions and, and really have data driven decisions. 
that we push forward and, and we help these areas really figure out what is happening again in real time in their region. So yes, lots of collaborations to really um, tackle these intricate public health issues um, and these partnerships are, are really gold to us. I think TFP would not exist without um, these partnerships and for sure my working group would not function without these partnerships. Thank you. It takes a village and thank you for bringing up the importance of the community health workers as key participants on these uh, projects. Dr. Anabel Rodriguez and Osman Galindo, uh, thank you for sharing your journey and for being an inspiration to many. Your commitment to improving communities and people's lives is incredible motivating. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.